Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. Efforts continue in the formulation of St. Lucia's national competitive agenda. Residents of Canaries to improve job market skills with the opening of an ICT career development center. The 2019 Summer Institute strengthens leadership in the education sector. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyon. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC, continues to forge ahead with the formulation of the National Competitive Agenda, jointly funded by the Government of St. Lucia and Compete Caribbean Partnership Facility. Once completed, the Competitiveness Agenda will provide the NCPC with the framework to measure how well St. Lucia is performing as it relates to various actions, policies and initiatives undertaken to improve the island's competitiveness. Here's Glenn Simon. Smart specialization is an innovative approach which aims to bolster economic growth and overall competitiveness by enabling a region or country to identify and develop its own competitive advantages. The smart specialization approach is being employed in the formation of the National Competitiveness Agenda for St. Lucia. Contracted to define St. Lucia's competitiveness agenda is Infide, a consulting firm based in Spain with over 30 years of experience in providing advanced services in innovation and competitiveness. Consultant with Infide, Jaime del Castillo, noted that the approach to formulating the agenda is at two levels, first of which is the analyzing of all data and trends within the economy of St. Lucia and that of similar competing destinations. The second level involves interfacing with various stakeholders in both the public and private sectors to identify the socio-economic situation of various activities on island. St. Lucia has an important tourist activity, a lot of the, the wealth of the island comes from that. But uh, we have to promote not only tourists, maintain the competitiveness, increase the competitiveness, but to use the tourists to promote also other activities as manufacturing, agriculture, etc., to sell to the, to the tourists and later to sell to the foreign markets where the tourists live. Castillo was admittedly pleased with the level and quality of participation and suggestions put forward by stakeholders during the diagnostic exercises. Meanwhile, project development consultant Dr. Karen Swift of Compete Caribbean Partnership Facility, the funders for this consultancy, said he was quite satisfied with the participatory nature of the engagements and the solid research which went into the analysis which led to the appropriate policy recommendations. Uh, right through all there's been a lot of positive engagement, a lot of good feedback that coincides with the analysis that the consulting firm has done and a lot of uh, useful input to go into for the sharpen and refine the agenda uh, which is on target for completion um, by December of this year. He added that a third and final mission is slated for October 2019 where a more refined draft of the agenda will be presented alongside the implementation plan and financing strategy. What needs to be done, how it's going to be done and how it's going to be paid for. That's where we're coming back to next when we return in October. Director of the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Fiona Hingson, said the competitiveness agenda will be vital to the work of the NCPC. The agenda is expected to have a 10-year life cycle involving short-term, medium-term and long-term activities. We are hoping that the agencies that will be involved in the implementation of the agenda would see it as a blueprint that they can use towards improving and St. Lucia's um, competitiveness. Because it is, it is an agenda that will um, incorporate the work of different agencies. It will also incorporate our work as the NCPC as well. So we are hoping that it can be used and we are really hoping that um, in the next few years we can see improvement in our competitiveness. Compete Caribbean continues to work collaboratively with the consulting firm Infide and the NCPC towards the targeted completion of the competitiveness agenda for St. Lucia. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. Speaking of competitiveness, residents of Canaries can now improve on job market skills with the opening of an ICT career development center in the community. More from Janelle Norville. Canaries recently saw the implementation of two developmental initiatives, that is the rebranding of the ICT Access Center to the Innovation and Career Development Center and the launch of the Youth and Adult Literacy Program, Yes I Can. 
Director of Innovation in the Ministry of Education, Innovation, General Relations and Sustainable Development, Linel Malzer, highlighting the thrust of the program, indicated that Canaries was specially selected for the pilot. You, the residents of Canaries, have been chosen to lead the way for the shift to nurturing creativity and ideation, that shift to generate products and services that will solve our problems and contribute to our national economic growth and the improvement of our lives. You are called to demonstrate the ideal to the rest of St. Lucia, where it relates to supporting your community in the phase of becoming literate in our project, Yes I Can. After which, we will not have the need to say to the world that St. Lucia is a fully literate society, but our economic and social outputs will communicate that without words. The rebranding of the center is described as an important milestone to meet the demands of the future, where citizens of St. Lucia will be given the opportunity to learn, innovate, and display their skills and talents. The centers will not only focus on technology, but also serve as a medium for citizens to obtain correct guidance, among other things. The Yes I Can program is an initiative between the government of St. Lucia and the government of Cuba. It is a literacy program developed in Cuba that is a teaching method for adult education and has been implemented in many countries the world over. Honorable Dominic Fede is the Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, and Parliamentary Representative for Ancillary Canaries. With innovativeness, what is required is not bigness in size, not uh, big allocations of resources, but what is required is the creativity of the human mind. And I think that this opportunity exists for small island developing states like St. Lucia as we seek for opportunities to diversify from some of our economic sectors like tourism. I am strongly convinced that information technology can play a greater role than it does today in the economic development of our country. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gil Rigabert, indicated that the launch and rebranding marked the commencement of the implementation of a suite of initiatives geared towards better equipping citizens to access opportunities for self-advancement and economic independence. This signals a paradigmatic shift away from simply providing ICT-related services, but ensuring that there are programs that can enhance your employability. I wish to echo what Ms. Malze said, that it is no coincidence that we are also launching the Yes, I Can program, which is an initiative that has been championed by our friends in Cuba, and we are delighted that Canaries has been chosen as the pilot to ensure that the citizens of this beautiful community or the residents of this beautiful community are not caught on the technological highway or on the hard shoulder, nor are they left out of the current literacy waves. The official ceremony was held on Sunday, 7th July 2019 at the Innovation and Career Development Center in Canaries. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The Ministry of Education is hoping to change the educational landscape of St. Lucia through art. The Ministry endorsed the third annual art conference for teachers, which according to the Deputy Permanent Secretary in Education, Kendall Kodra, was an opportunity to create and sustain the professional learning communities that must be developed so that art programs can be strengthened within all schools. Kodra is hopeful that the art programs will be expanded into printmaking, photography, computer art, sculptures and papier-mâché. The Deputy Permanent Secretary also hopes that art will evolve to become integral to the overall teaching methods within schools. Art plays a significant role in helping students to develop passion and motivation. But I really want this morning to challenge you through the professional learning communities to find ways of integrating visual arts into other subject areas so that it becomes part of the human affective experience. Let art not be seen as a mere subject, but a teaching method and a learning process. 
This would require some change in school improvement planning, but I know this is going to be beneficial. To those persons who have completed their course in papier-mâché and who will be certified, I congratulate you. This is one of the best forms of job-embedded professional development, and this is the model for teacher development that must be promoted. Meantime, the Ministry of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations is hosting the 2019 Summer Institute to strengthen leadership in the island's education sector. The Summer Institute opened Monday in both the north and south of the island and will run until Friday, July 12th, 2019. It started off initially with a grant from the Global Education, the Global Partnership for Education, and it's now coined the OECS Education Support Program. This year, the EQUIP team has come on board. The EQUIP project was launched in October last year. And this year, there's a, there's a strong professional development component. We have recognized that and in any loans, in any um, initiatives that we are undertaking, we are integrating professional development activities in it. We are in a stage where our students are ever-changing. The methodologies that we need um, to, to train our students, the, the, some, some persons call them our technology students, and the methods that were used in previous years are no longer applicable. So we need to put instructors to keep on retraining, retooling, reskilling our leaders and teachers. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Yes, and Lucia, this is your boy Mark 11 telling all the drivers on the road, be careful on the roads today and always roll with a designated driver. If you're the driver, drink responsibly. Go and come back home safely. Out. A message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness, Human Services, Gender Relations and this station. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sport. Welcome everyone. I'm Ryan O'Brien with your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. Table tennis coach within the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Chris Wells, has described the last school sporting year for table tennis as being a very good one. Wells spoke to NTN Nightly recently following the recognition of the island's top performers in table tennis among schools. We had a very successful school table tennis year. I mean, we were able to complete the secondary school's male and female team championships. We were able to complete the individual events like boys singles, girls singles, boys doubles, and mixed doubles. Then we were also able to accomplish our fourth annual primary schools, well, inter-districts table tennis at the primary school level where we had six of the districts competing and it was a very competitive tournament. And to cap it off, during the third term, we had the Special Needs Table Tennis Championships, which featured all the Special Needs schools island-wide competing in a table tennis tournament, as well as a physical literacy fiesta. So we, in all in all, we had a very packed year, but it was also a successful year. Looking towards the future, the table tennis coach was optimistic that it looked bright but also cautioned that it will also call for greater resources and mobilization. We have a, a bright future, but it leads to a lot of challenges. I mean, like, based on the rate at which our, our sport is now starting to grow, it's, we see the urgent need for more coaches, more training facilities island-wide that can house about four tables in each of the sporting districts. So we, we're getting more pressure now because when a lot of work is being done, you're under a lot of pressure to deliver all the time. So, yes, yeah, so that's, that's where we have to go for the future. Table tennis coach, Chris Wells. CARICOM Secretary General, Erwin LaRocque, has described the recent CARICOM 10K held here as another successful running of the event and noted that the activity was well in keeping with the theme of encouraging healthy lifestyles of persons around the region. It always amazes me to see our athletes, um, the endurance that they exhibit, 
as I said earlier, that, that they epitomize um, discipline and healthy lifestyle. And of course, being in St. Lucia, this is the second 10K race that I've witnessed in St. Lucia. I recall the last one I was in St. Lucia, of course at the time I was not the Secretary General, but I was here for it. Um, starting at the same point and ending up more or less at the same point, and I think it went well. Uh, we've had, we have nine um, participating countries here. I hope um, we can continue to increase on the numbers. And of course, I think this is the youngest ever um, participant in a, in a 10K event. We've had youth um, in, in, in uh, um, other uh, race events during the 10K, but that was a 2K or 3K, but this is the first time we've had that, and it's amazing. And I think it augurs well, and, I, and, and the theme for today and the general theme of, of, of leading a healthy lifestyle is something that we have to take on seriously. Secretary General Arock congratulated all participants of the 10K and stressed that they were all winners in their own right. And that's how we conclude our update from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. A Memorandum of Understanding, an MOU, was signed between Niagara College and the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. As part of the MOU, Niagara College and the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College will explore potential opportunities for student and faculty exchanges as well as academic pathways. Established in 1985, the college is the only community college on the island of St. Lucia and is accredited by the St. Lucian Government's Ministry of Education. Niagara College was recently awarded a consultancy contract for mainstreaming gender equality of St. Lucia's National Sustainable Development Plan. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Farmer's Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Al Creole. I'm innovative. I'm competitive. I am productive. I'm creative. I constantly improve what I do. And how I do it. I provide excellent customer service. I never stop learning. I give up my best, always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. Welcome back. We join Prime Minister Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyon. Monsieur Madame, Department of Responsibility, we have a mission of Gouvernement de cette ci That's the GIS, the CMP Television National, and the NTN Capazoto, Nouvelle Arcoyon, Presato, Prime Minister Hutchinson. Premier Minister de cette Honorable Alain Chasney, qui est associé chef de pays CARICOM, who resisted et puis en pile force et opposition pour action de l'Union Europe pour placer ces pays où ils à sur liste de nous parce que ont cru que ces pays sont là qu'à agendoué et encouragé dans l'autre pays pour servir ces pays où ils ont carré là pour serrer l'argent. Le Premier ministre Chasney, qui était qu'à adresser la cérémonie, pour officiellement ouvrir la 40e conférence des chefs CARICOM à cette ci mercredi passé, déclaré que l'action est là qu'à dommager la réputation de l'Union pour la vie de honte. Selon le Premier ministre Chasney, la panique a absolument pièce justification pour ces pays qui ont la première qualité d'action sur les rois là, qui a dommagé la vie de l'Union tellement sérieuse. Le Premier ministre Chasney a noté que la faiblesse de ces pays de l'Union pour établir la protection contre les cyclones et les désastres naturels et aussi le changement de climat qui a l'occasion pour les pays de l'Union 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 de le Premier ministre Chasney a ajouté que, malheureusement, ces gros pays ont refusé pour assister à ce qu'on a eu à des gros qui méritent pour aider à battre le changement de climat. Malgré ces pays qui ont continué à faire qu'on a eu pour adresser ça eux-mêmes. Alors, le Premier ministre Chasney, qui a eu responsabilité pour conduire à faire CARICOM pour le 6 mois, fait un appel pour ce chef CARICOM coopérer ensemble pour établir une fondation pour effectivement adresser le changement de climat qui a continué à dévaliser. Oui, Jean, c'est tellement mauvais. Il conseille et veut dire ce chef-là pour ne pas tarder à ce initiative ça là et quitter, pas quitter ce que l'on est avant de faire une gamme. Et aussi, oui, merci, secrétaire général des Nations Unies, pour promettre et faire, pour aider CARICOM à toute façon qui est nécessaire pour abattre le changement de climat. Côté à ce que l'on programme, pour t'en plus à ce adresse premier ministre Chastney du 40e conférence des chefs CARICOM qui était pour le coup en cette semaine passée.
a parlé de ça. Le chef Carrie Comlan a aussi parlé de manière yo très cautionnée, à façon qui a continué pour tenir nos régions à la liste de Selon ces chefs-là, ça se une menace qui a directement affecté la vie économique de ces pays-là qui a eu nous. Ce chef-là a déclaré que c'est des voies pour déterminer la manière de manager les affaires financières. financiers. Ce chef-là a déclaré que ça vraiment pas acceptable que ces règles là que les autorités établies pour régler le système de taxes ne pas trouver des pièces de respect par eux qui a imposé la loi qui est pour faire et puis gouvernance des affaires de taxes. Et aussi, l'opération, l'argent qui est cassé en ce pays, ça là, sans WEG, sans ces autorités, ça la chaîne de consultation, et puis le gouvernement, oui, j'en même. Le chef Carré comme là, très contoyé, dit Manuel Lemouic, qui a continué pour nous, 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 le chef là prié pour la nuit manœuvre en place. Pour tchène zéro à ce sac qui a fait à Europe, pour région ça, pour jouer même ça, supporter l'intérêt yo, et bien protéger l'intérêt national yo. Le chef Karl Komlan a décidé qu'il y aura une suivi action yo, et qu'il y aura un effort pour établir un plus haut degré de coopération, et puis l'Union Europe, et l'Amérique, pour gouverner à faire taxes et un sujet comme ça. Yon organisation de justice en collaboration et puis bureau attorney général cette ci te tien yon atile pou adresser bon reg pou mer loi c'est pas c'est c'était le secrétaire permanent avec le plus haut officier public qui est responsable pour développement reg à divers départements gouvernement à cette ci atile ça là c'était pour adresser principalement afin que ni pou faire et puis système justice et kail audience à caricom mais qui pas directement en bas conduite les kail justice qui ni brisé ou réglé. Le département de loi à l'Université ouest des Ababad, qui était ouest ça conduit, a tiré ça là, qui dit pour trois jours. Le directeur qui est ça pour écrire loi à bureau à ce général là, Gillian Vidal Jules, parlait des objectifs à tirer ça là. Madame Jules conseille ses participants pour suivre à tirer à très sérieux, pour être plus capable pour établir ou qui a suivi la loi PIA et qui a sans décembre. Et l'honnêteté, il y a aussi qui a souillé pour considérer sérieusement le programme ça là, pour la part de pièces mal comprendre et pour faire assurer que tout ça y a fait égal à ce qu'il y a pour tuer ses participants en façon pour d'idées, pour, pour établir des règles ça là, qui a adressé tout ça qui n'est pas fait et puis le loi PIA pour empêcher pièces de complication directeur régional pour l'organisation de justice ça là, Velma Newton, complémenté ses participants pour la théorie. Organisation de justice Sala, c'est une initiative qui a opération pour ce que l'année après ça, pour essayer d'établir bonne justice pour femmes, hommes et enfants en région et qui établi par le pays Canada. C'est comme ça que nous entrons dans votre nouvelle là, monsieur, mesdames, mon cas, monsieur, autant pour qu'à garder, mon cas, une invitation pour que je ne puisse pas encore dire qu'on se veut la vie, mais après ça, on va avoir une nouvelle à Créole. Après ça, mon cas, vous êtes tous les gens. Merci, on peut le promesse. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. It is mostly fair, hazy and breezy, occasionally becoming cloudy with a few showers. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 20 miles per hour or 31 kilometers per hour. This wave is expected to affect the Eastern Caribbean by Friday. Two other tropical waves located over the eastern tropical Atlantic and just off the coast of West Africa are moving westward at about 12 and 17 miles per hour or 19 and 28 kilometers per hour respectively. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next two days. Tides for Castries Harbor low at 3.09 p.m., high at 9.58 p.m. Tides for Viewford Bay low at 4.36 p.m., high at 11.05 p.m. Seas moderate to locally rough with waves 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to above normal seas and reduced visibility. The sun will rise Wednesday at 5.42 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m.
You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Chong.